Hey everybody, welcome back, it's some Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. I need like a comfort book, so we're gonna do the new Avengers again. I just, I miss these guys so much. <laughs> and we lamented in the previous volume how we need to get them back. We gotta get back to the new Avengers. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think if we were to reintroduce the new Avengers, it would stick the way it did when it was introduced. Like, I don't think that this could ever happen again. Mm -hmm. I think it could, no, it's Marvel. You could always do it again. Force Works had another <laughs> miniseries in the last 10 years. Was it called Force Still Works? No, unfortunately it. it wasn't. But it didn't. Just like it didn't <laughs> the first time. But well, Force Still so doesn't force, work. That's yeah. Force out of work. <laughs> yeah, it certainly was. But if they can do it, they could do it still. But like their previous iterations, I don't think they could ever make the new Avengers work again. Because you need like a, a lot of factors working in unison. Like you need a powerhouse writer like Bendis to shepherd the line. You need the line to be able to be shepherded. Right. <laughs> and you need the audience to be amenable to it, as opposed to where we are now. Like Jason Aaron had like an unprecedented run on uh, the Avengers franchise but like no one else was picking up what he was putting down. But he still got to roll forward and did a lot of egregious things with the franchise. <laughs> things that would have serious and heavy ramifications. Stuff like this, where like big shit happened and Bendis stuck around to make sure that the big shit he dropped was picked back up. He was the one who was dropping and scooping, but I digress. <laughs> he was, was able happening. to do it, yeah. and it, and it and it created the illusion of cohesion. Right. I believe that's called a recovery. <laughs> Where like someone's dog just drops a big deuce and they're like, I gotta pull a recovery. <laughs> but New Avengers Volume 4 or whatever. The, this is the one where they deal immediately with the fallout of House of M. Mm. And Civil War is on the horizon. That's really all you need to know about context. Right. And they know it's happening? Civil War, it's like setting the stage, the or it's like human that just does Act, happen. It, it it will happen to this. It's actually, I think it's fun because Bendis is just like, here's what I'm doing, here's all these ideas. And then Mark Miller just shows up with Civil War, which mm. completely drops a bomb on this entire franchise. Like, well, yeah. here's the team, it's in half. <laughs> So, uh, Mark Miller and Bendis were the Cap and the Iron Man of that story. That's true. Yeah, they were in their own way. Yeah. They were they were dropping and receiving. <laughs> so, here's a team, the new Avengers. They have been established. Tony Stark has given Peter Parker his Iron Spider uniform. That's mm. that's how we can immediately date it. Right. And the Superhuman Registration Act has been drafted and is being circulated amongst the inner circle. Like people oh, are aware of okay. it, though our team does not know much about it outside of like what Iron Man has gleaned or if Spider-Man has or has not pulled a Mr. Smith goes to Washington in his own okay. book. So it is deliberately laying the groundwork for 100%. Civil so, War. Yeah. yeah. The Superhuman <laughs> Registration Act. Yeah. Was that started because of mutants? No. How's that didn't help? <laughs> but thankfully most people didn't remember it happening anyway which is actually a big plot point in this story and they've done legislation to limit the freedom of our heroes forever especially for mutants there should be some senator who's like always been opposed to the mutants who's like objecting to the superhuman registration act without because adding it doesn't a rider have like a carve out for how to specially handle mutants. yeah but how do we deal with mutants they're a very specific issue that are also Definitely in the purview of the Superhuman Registration Act. Oh, jeez, man, you and the mutants. I, yeah, that would be actually it really It covers fun. them by default. Right. They are superhumans. Yeah. You're like, no, they're super mutants. Right. They are homo superior. Yeah, that is a that different is not thing. superhuman. There's a distinction. Homo superior, born with an X gene that changes their whole uh, existence. Superhuman is you re became super post-birth. I think it's offensive that we, you would conflate the two <laughs> with this act yeah. and, and put them on equal status. They're not equal. They're not. They're not humans. Exactly. Yeah. New Avengers. Uh, this one is written, of course, by Brian Michael Bendis with art by both Steve McNiven and Mike Deodato Jr. You can see the clear distinction between the two of them. The New Avengers have established themselves. They had a big old press conference, which really pissed off Maria Hill, who is now head of S.H.I.E.L.D., and uh, she is not a big fan of these Avengers types. Not one bit. Uh, mm. She's part of S.H.I.E.L.D. Fuck you, you have to be. Yeah, but no, but Nick Fury yeah, was, was, Nick was very buddy-buddy buddy with yeah. these superhuman types. Like, no, she is pretty much on board with the Superhuman Administration Act. At least she begins to be. Mm. Uh, but 
Yeah, that, that's where we... So that's where we are with S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, House of M has just happened, and at the end of House of M, just to give you a quick refresher course, not that we're gonna talk about House of M at all, mm. but at the end of House of M... it's been like 10 years since we talked about it. It's true. But at the end of House of M, you know, all these mutants are depowered, except for like 198 of them. Some Marvel Universe egghead on TV says that what do you do with all of the energy that was taken from these depowered mutants? Like, what? all these people had power, and then they suddenly didn't. But where did the power go? Uh, and it's, it's like, no, it was a magic it's spell! It's magic, man! Like, what? It didn't go anywhere. Right, what's the dark dimension? Who cares? <laughs> or it gets erased. It's not matter. No, but it is, though. It's, it's energy. And... Is it? That's or what, is it a, a, a structural capability to use energy yeah. or generate energy that was simply, you know, restructured. Well, and that's what he's saying, yeah. is that, like, it may have been restructured into something, and then at the end of House of M, on, like, the dark side of the Earth, there's, like, this big energy surge, and you're like, what's that? And Ben is like, oh, indeed. What is that? And we're gonna see what that is. Okay. And so, essentially, all the energy, and that's what all they call it, from every depowered mutant on Earth is generated into a big ball of energy that is surging towards the Earth. And so it's now, put outside the Earth? It was like removed and then came back. <laughs> so they teleported the energy from the mutants into space. Yeah. And it is, it has mass, I guess, so it's gravitationally attracted to the Earth, so they're just pulling it well, back in maybe. It's not so much that it has mass as it has Intelligence. sentience. Yep. What? So I got, I got a weird question about this. Uh, I don't know if it's how, how could it be weirder than what's happened? <laughs> so when House of M happened, uh -huh. and they lost their powers, yeah, do they still have the mutant gene? Okay, that's Ooh. a good question. And as I recall, they don't. Mm. Okay, so they were genetically modified. Yes. Yeah, and there's no lost energy. energy. So they didn't lose they just, anything. They, just they were just changed, changed the way their cells are structured. Right. Like just because you were on fire a week ago and you're not anymore doesn't mean that the fire had to go anywhere. Right, or it could have just gone out. Right. Or that fire's gone. Right. The thing that so, generated the fire was removed. Yeah. Did all those DNA pieces <laughs> then, then go form. into whatever this is? Uh -huh. Because what would be fantastic is instead of losing like all of these mutants, or say however many it was. Millions. millions. And, and, you, and you left them back. Billions! billions. <laughs> But no, it was millions, though. It was millions, though, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if you made, like, a certain number of characters because they all comprised of that actual DNA? Oh, yeah. Just a big blob of DNA that forms itself spontaneously. I mean, we're, we're, like, we're all big blobs we're, of DNA. We're no, that, DNA is in our cells. Most of what we are is protein. Yeah, we're doing that, but with energy instead. Like, you're, you're, you're hitting on that point. Right. Okay. But, uh, but what is energy? I don't know what the fuck that means. It looks like a big thing of fire. Oh. So it's surging, and it starts heading towards the North Pole. So it's a chemical reaction. Sure. I, they don't even bother to tell you. Is it not even that, and you find out it's actually some other friggin' thing? No. Okay. It is the energy of all the depowered mutants okay. now taken and put someplace else. Okay. And then it comes back to Earth and it lands in a post office at the North Pole. Watch <laughs> out, Santa. And so... <laughs> Everything is decimated, the town is ruined and destroyed. In this big widescreen comics format, it hits this one dude, and suddenly he is surging with the energy of every depowered mutant ever made. Well, yeah, he just got impregnated by like millions oh. of mutants with all their DNA. No, you said DNA, but it's not, it's energy. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna let you grow but where did that book. DNA go? It's still- Because they did change their X gene. Well, that's true, but it, 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 just, it just modified, it didn't remove oh, it. Oh, yeah. Remember, it is a magic spell. Maybe it just switched around the, the way the base pairs are, are organized. They're still there. Sure. It just, it just moved them, so it's no longer an extra exactly. gene. It's some other gene. So that guy is now a big problem. Right. He's all glowy. Yeah, yeah he's all like, glow. He's glowy. Already. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. That's a lot out. of power. He also looks very angry. He does. I, you would be pretty upset if you got hit with the energy of every does, mutant on the does, planet. Does he have enough energy to rival the Phoenix? <gasps> it doesn't come up. Damn it. So, does he have enough energy? To uh, give like, it all back to the mutants? <laughs> no, I was gonna say, do you have enough energy where, like, if if Professor X tried to search for other mutants, he'd only be able to find this one? <laughs> it just outshine everything. It should, it's but it never oh, comes geez. up. Nothing come up in the X Men. Nah, nobody's playing ball. Damn it. So Stark and Marie Hill are having a teleconference 
about the big news event that was declaring the Avengers have returned <laughs> without any conversation with S.H.I.E.L.D. Ah, yes. And uh, so Maria Hill and Tony Stark get into like a dick measuring contest about like who has the authority to do that? Mm. And Stark's like, I, I don't give a crap about yeah. whatever you have to say. Right. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Who has the authority? I have the authority. What? Exactly. It's the Avengers. I'm a private it's citizen. A, it's right. I'm just declared we're the Avengers. It's just the name. What do you, right. What do you mean? Yeah. Get off my They back. live in my house. <laughs> exactly. And I can't invite my friends over and have a press conference and say that we're a team? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? But it's really all a subterfuge to get at the real point mm. that Maria Hill wants to know about, which is, she's like, what is the House of M? And he's oh. like, what are you talking about? I don't know She's like, well, our satellites built by you, <laughs> by the way, saw the Blackbird of the X-Men and the Avengers Quinjet land in Genosha, and then, like, all the mutants were gone. <laughs> and I thought, you know, maybe you might know something about that. Mm. And he's like, Spider-Man said he'd never been to Genosha, so we all decided to go. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Hang on a second. Do -do 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 -do. Well, that file's been removed from your storage, so... <laughs> yeah. Well, what plane? <laughs> I, I wish that had happened. So, that's the end of that. All we find out, basically, is that Maria Hill is really upset, right. and Stark is being kind of a dick. Right. You know, she's like, we didn't have to be enemies here. Right. And he's like, well, that's that, that's good to know. Right. Well, he he's resenting that she's even asking. Yes. And but she's like, not... I'm in charge of the world. Like, I'm supposed to be the oh, world... Were you elected? Were you voted to be in charge? No, that's not how the power structure works. Doesn't that make you a fascist? <laughs> I mean, we all are wearing matching uniforms with a big, you know, angular insignia on our sleeves, but no. <laughs> I love seeing this. Yeah. Because it's not enough to have an alert or an alarm just blaring. No. You have to have words. <laughs> this is a level red threat alert. This is a level red alert. This is a level red alert. This is a level red alert. I know I should be shitting myself, but like, it is catchy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, oh shit, go! we gotta go! Uh, and so this they... building is on fire. <laughs> Nature's <laughs> oldest foe. They send jets to go th mm. see it. And, right, and uh, probably blow it up. Oh yeah, but before oh, yeah. you can do that, the, the- It's too dangerous to be kept alive. That's true. So the man sees it and then blows up those jets. Ah. And they're like, oh shit. Okay, bad guy confirmed. Yep, so they're, they're like, all right, well- uh, Reminds me very much of Goldeneye. Yeah, yeah, mm. it does. So they, they, they're like, what are we gonna do about this? Like, how are we gonna, all right, call Reed Richards. That's who we'll call Reed Richards. Uh, he's not picking up. He's not one of those dirty Avengers who's being like kind of insubordinate. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> yeah, he's part of the Fucktastic Four. <laughs> that's what we call them internally in Shield because we don't like them either. <laughs> well, we don't let him know that we don't like him. That's he's, right. He, he's nice to us, but we talk shit about him behind his back. <laughs> I'm sure he'd never figure it out. <laughs> so they're like, well, we need to we need to get like something on the ground to deal with it, and they're like, well, they are heading towards Canada, so so they scramble Alpha Flight. Oh, okay. So Alpha Flight springs into action and all die. What? Oh shit! Yep, this dude just 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 kills all of them. And I remember reading this, going, um, did Bendis just kill all of Alpha Flight in this Avengers book in one page? And the answer was yes. And I remember the message boards lighting up with where they're like, um, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. <laughs> and they had to like fix that because they were working on it, and they're like, hey, um. The fuck? <laughs> I don't think you understand. We all have a book coming out <laughs> called Alpha Flight. Yeah, well, no, you don't. Or if you do, it has to be about fixing it and saving <laughs> all these guys or resurrecting them. And so they do, some of them. Mm. Not all of them, mm. but some of them. It, this book has ramifications. Wow. It's, it's really weird to say and to know <laughs> that like this book this matters. This random book. Especially when you were reading it at the time. Oh, this was a flagship book. Like, Who this, is this character? I've never heard of him. He's new, he's a brand new character. His name's Michael. Spoilers. Does he still exist? Technically. Oh. Well. Does anyone care? Now? Yeah. No. Okay. Did his name so it can't be, be Michael because it starts with an M? No, they want you to... Okay, so there's another Avengers book called The Korvac Saga. It's named after a guy named Michael Korvac, who coincidentally has a whole bunch of energy. His name's Michael, and the Avengers have to go deal with him. Mm -hmm. And he's just a, he's just a guy. He's just keying into things that he is 
tangentially aware of. Because, like, there's no effing way he read the Korvac saga. Right, but someone he, but he, he heard about it. But he doesn't know of it. Right. And he only sort of read the Kree Scroll War. But he read more of it than the Korvac saga. So this is our reference to the Korvac saga, is that I'm just going to take it and do my own version of it, such that I know anything about it, which is to say the name. Right. And, and something about energy. The Kree Scroll War also is a thing that he read and constantly references, even though it doesn't really happen the way that he references it. Right. But he did remember reading it, and so it is referenced. There's even a reference to it in this book, too. And it's like, dude. So it's making a beeline for the American coast. Every attempt that Maria Hill makes at getting anyone but the Avengers to get involved is stopped by coincidence. And the president gets on the line. He's like, call Captain America. He'll figure it out. Right. She's like, I don't want to do it. No, you don't understand. <sighs> so then we just get this one moment where she finally goes, damn it. Avengers assemble. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hate them. I love that they were like, no. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. You don't like us. Piss uh, off. No, like, the Avengers aren't uh, monsters. Well, well, I'll, I'll see if I can slot you in yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? And I'm thinking like next Thursday <laughs> around like four. But I am just swamped. It's going to be real tough. They are not swamped, and we'll see what they're doing instead. Uh, in Detroit, in one of the worst areas of Detroit, according to Bendis, uh, the Avengers just drop their Quinjet right in the middle of town, and then everyone just comes out. There's a couple of kids. They're having a banal conversation. And then they see like everyone. You know, Captain America, Iron Man, Spider-Man, etc. And they're like, uh, what are you doing? And they're like, are you supposed to be in school? <laughs> Go. So they run to school, or probably just around the corner. Right. Where they shit their pants. <laughs> right. And Luke Cage is like, all right, Avengers, let's go. And so they just start, like, walking around. And we see, like, Luke Cage encounter a couple of people who are doing a drug deal. And he's like, it's over for you guys. That's enough. That's... Knock it off. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the news shows up, and they're like, uh... Hi, Captain America, what are you doing? And he's like, I would direct all your questions to Luke Cage. And so they go to Luke Cage and he's like, hi. And he proceeds to like hold court and explain that like, and this is playing off a moment in the New Avengers saga when Cap recruits Luke Cage and Luke Cage says, if I do say yes, I want to be heard. Mm. And Cap's like, fair enough. I think I hear everyone out when I have an Avengers meeting, so sure. No, no, I want to be heard by the world. <laughs> yeah, I want to be heard and implemented. Mm. And so Luke Cage had this idea that was kind of a real thing. He references a Giuliani era period where um, they would send police in New York City to like high crime areas, just like mm. a, a whole cadre of cops. And they would just stay there until the crime rate went down. Mm -hmm. And then they just move to the next neighborhood. Right. And just, just go in a line. And what they found, according to this fictional comic book character, <laughs> is that even though the cops left, the crime rate still stayed down. Mm -hmm. And he calls it one thing, but it's actually not called that. And even then, there's very little data to support that this was a real practice that worked. <laughs> but I like the idea behind it right. in theory, though I do find it a little problematic. Mm. Uh, and I know there's a lot of commenters in there that don't like the word problematic, mm. but it is a word that references things that do have <laughs> dicey social implications involved. Right. And I think we can all agree that if a primarily white group of people show up in Detroit with superpowers and just go, whatever you're doing, knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's called occupation. <laughs> yes. Yes, I believe you're right. Yeah. So, <laughs> and we see the Avengers are just kind of like putting out a couple of fires. Like, and I don't mean literal ones, metaphorical ones, obviously. You know, like there was... Yeah, it's not um, like there's a, you know, a dumpster. On fire. Right. Or a trash barrel, whatever those things are. Oh, yes, yeah, a trash barrel, yeah. But, uh, you know, a couple of spray painters and Spider-Man just webs them. You know, not all of them, just the, just the spray cans. You know, knock it off. Yeah. Uh, you realize that's a problem in New York too, right? right? Yeah, but like we're dealing with this right now. Like we're, we're showing the Avengers are changing their tactics. Right. And it's all because of the new blood we've got in here like Luke Cage. And like Luke is just doing his thing. And Cap and Iron Man are like, man, like he is really good at this and he doesn't even know it. And mm -hmm. it's like Ben is kind of pushing up Luke Cage a little bit. 
And it, it will eventually, like I want, I want to say like 10 or 15 years later, inform Luke Cage becoming mayor of New York. Mm. Though I don't think anyone- Not Detroit! No! He doesn't live there! He's not even from here! Yeah, but that's where he's cleaning up! Just now! Because Detroit was in the news for being crappy or something yeah, at the time. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. No, well, look, it's just a famous like example of a of an area industrial city yeah. that's in decline. And Venice clearly wasn't uh, aware of Camden. So <laughs> Luke is doing his thing, and uh, and then they get a call from S.H.I.E.L.D. And like, oh, we gotta go! So it's just immediately undercut. And I love that they're like, <laughs> oh, we got something better to do. We As we always know. will. Because <laughs> Luke Cage basically says, the plan is, you know, like, we are going to save the world. But when, when we're off, like mm. when we have off days, we're going to go to, like, high-risk areas, and we're just going to stand there. Right. So oh, now we got to go. When the world's in danger, you're going to spring into action. Oh, yeah. When like, go the whole city you know is uh, under siege by crime, you're just going to stand there. Well, we're gonna stand and hope around, that that works. and then eventually, like, hope that you know that, like, we're not leaving. Right. I mean that. Okay. So, <laughs> but, okay. there's a decent plan to this, and can they really tackle just normal level crime being superheroes? Is that a problem if it's like an abuse of power almost? Luke references this where he says, like, okay, we are here to deal with like the street crime and like the the problems that are arising from like a high risk, low income area. But I'm also here to mess with the people who allow this to happen, who are, you know, mm -hmm. on a higher level. Right. Like we have a crack house next to a school. What zoning board allowed this to occur? You know what I mean? Like- Okay, so you're gonna go like talk to the like city planners? Yeah, like, well I'm gonna go like, to like the mayor and be like, what's your problem? And like embarrass you publicly oh. until you make changes. Right. Uh, or at least that's the implication which we never pay off in the entire series. Because it's the only time they ever do this. And we just have to, have to assume that in between the pages, yeah. they this also... This is to demonstrate that they, that they will do this a lot. Right, which they never do again. Right, which just reinforces the idea that they're just like... <laughs> this is, a, this is a, uh, an impotent concept yeah. and it's never going to work. <laughs> And, uh, and and is is silly to try. It'll just, it'll just All right, be quietly it. shelved. <laughs> but then we got a call. Right, but then we got called and we got to go. Yeah. And I imagine in the next meeting, looks like, hey, where are we going to the next town? What? What are you talking about? It's Civil War, baby. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> in the next arc, we're never going to do this again because we're going to be too busy punching each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Sweet. I, I just imagine it's like, well, that didn't work. Yeah. Because, you know, we went there, and then, like, uh, last I read, uh, Detroit's still full of crime. So, I'm sorry, your idea sucks. Yeah. It's like, well, hey, man, we left in the middle. We didn't have a chance for it to work. Well, well and I was hoping... What are you talking about? We have to stay there indefinitely? Uh, That's not a plan. Although, I will say, someone, probably Iron Man, stole that idea and implemented it in its own way post-Civil War with the 50-state initiative. Hmm. Every state had its own super team. Right. So now, Illinois... Now it's their super team's problem. Right. Did he proportionally allocate superheroes based on state population? Mm. Or size? Was it like 100 in right, New York like and one, one in, in Wyoming? Wyoming? <laughs> yeah, if there's one in Alaska, you got a lot of area to cover. Granted, most of it's gonna be on the coast. Yeah, but you're, oh, yeah, but, that's a good point. Should it so be by- So you need a speedster by... or a flyer? So what about uh. Texas? Texas is huge. Right, no, you need like a team. You need like two teams for Texas. <laughs> uh, New Jersey is incredibly densely populated. It's true, yeah. Yeah, you need mm. a team in there too. Although I would imagine they probably were very lax on the New Jersey team because you know, they were in the shadow of New York. Most superheroes are congregated there anyway. Right. So it's like you got a little spillover. But yeah, we're not, we're not here to debate the merits <laughs> of the 50 <laughs> State Initiative, yeah. which also was a scroll plot, by the way. <laughs> that's what you say. <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> no, I meant you say we're not here to debate oh, that. Oh, that's yeah. true, yeah. Well, we only have so much time. You know, the audience is getting restless. So <laughs> the, the Wolverine sees that Alpha Flight dies, and he's like, oh, no, my Canadian friends, no. Oh, yeah. Because he used to be on there. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah, very he, sad. He pours out both a bottle of uh, whiskey and a bottle of maple syrup for them. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, my brothers. So uh, <laughs> then we see like Michael make his way towards Cleveland, and we're like, "Oh no, 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 not Cleveland!" Not Cleveland. And uh, so they're like, "Oh shit!" I just realized that Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, and Luke Cage, and other characters that literally can't fly or do anything of consequence against like a pre-New Avengers Avengers level threat is coming. So call Ms. Marvel and get her 
power draining ass over here mm. because we need someone who actually can kick ass. And so she shows up and she's on her way. The mm. X Men are not picking up the phone because House of them just happened and they're all really sad. Yeah, we're and, all super busy except for Wolverine who's on your team. <laughs> yeah, and Captain America's like, and I want another person that Ben has invented. And uh, <laughs> so that is Daisy Johnson. And so, because Daisy Johnson, this is another book we did like 11 years ago. Is she Quake? Yeah, she's Quake. Uh, But she didn't have a name yet. She was just Daisy Johnson. And she looks exactly like Angelina Jolie from Hackers. Oh. In both her debut, which was Secret War, which was uh, written by Bendis, Mm -hmm. and in this. Right. And, And at that point, they were like, yeah, the character model is just Angelina Jolie from Hackers. Right. I'm like, sure. Just hackers, though. <laughs> yeah, because that's that the her? only movie where she looked like that. No, that's Lindy. Okay. Because they're like, all right, oh, we have the Sentry now. Yeah, the Sentry. Oh, the Sentry. Oh, wait. He also has like, you know, schizophrenia. So he'll right. have good days and bad days. So right. they call up Lindy and they're like, we need Sentry, and he, and he and he's in bed, just freaking out. So that's not going to work for us today. <sighs> okay, we've got to work cut out for us. Oh, so anyway, they they call Shield, get this Daisy Johnson, and uh, you know. So they do. And Spider-Man's like, whew, I don't know if my fancy schmancy Civil War era Iron Spider suit's going to be able to stand up to that guy. And Iron Man's like, you're not going to go to the fight. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, I mean, come on, you don't have to bench me. And Iron Man's like, no, you're going to S.H.I.E.L.D. and you're going to you're gonna use that brain you never use in any of these massive events <laughs> to try and figure out how to depower him. Okay. And he's like, oh, okay. oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'm well, the leader. web. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm thinking web, webs for change? Spider-Man does not have the same problem as Wolverine. Where he's like, what if I stab him? <laughs> all right, uh, he melts your a... knives with his infinite power. That's all I got. We have to come what to if a... I go into a berserker rage? <laughs> uh, he dissolves your skeleton. <laughs> but it's made of adamantium. <laughs> what if we uh, come to a peaceful solution? Okay, I peacefully stab him six times. <laughs> That's, that's the antithesis of what I'm trying to say. So they're, they're, they're gonna send Spider-Man there, along with Spider-Woman, because she's also like a shield agent, mm. and secretly, so a a Hydra right? agent, and oh, okay. also secretly a scroll. <laughs> okay, just checking. Yeah. So Cap calls Bob, and he yells the schizophrenia out of him. He's just like, hey, Bob! And Bob's like, the void! And he's like, shut up. Put on your sentry costume and get your ass on the plane! <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Iron Man is the first responder to the, 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 the guy. Because he can fly. Because he can fly. Yeah. And so he goes there, and he, he also is like, you know, he's, his suit is super. You know, right. It can analyze all that shit and you know figure sure. out like what's up with him. It's got all that science it's in got there. Got all that science in there, all that technology. So he's checking so them out. So tell me what we're looking at. Ah, oh, looks like a lot of DNA coming to life. It's not DNA! <laughs> but it is like that. It's like the suit's like, oh, it's a lot of energy. <laughs> Mutant energy? Uh, Does it know? I, I think they figure it out later. But like oh, they, okay. they're, they're, so Iron Man's like, hey, I'm Iron Man. I'm, are you a guy? Like, are you from here? Yeah. Or are you an alien? And it's not talking. Mm. And uh, Shield's like, like just watching, yeah. And then uh, finally, he's just like, "What do you? What's your name?" And the man speaks and says, ine- inevitably, he speaks and says, mm-hmm. "Michael." And everyone's like, "Michael? Is that his name? Did he say Michael?" <laughs> Michael, right? That's that's anticlimactic. Okay, like, that sounds like a human name. All right, Michael, what are you doing? And Michael starts to talk when Ms. Marvel flies in and hits him and flies him into the atmosphere. Uh, in a great moment, they're just, boom, she flies through the O's. <laughs> nice. And Iron Man's like, God damn it. Uh, right? That's uh, what you uh, get when you call Carol Danvers. <laughs> so she's just like, all right, well, I'll start, I'll start absorbing your energy. And uh, so she does, and she gets blasted away and then becomes binary, which is her... Okay, so Ms. Marvel's gone through a lot of different identities and changes, mm-hmm. one of which was a more like cosmically powered version called Binary. There is no plot reason for this to occur, nor does it come up ever again. Like, it's it, not like the, mm. the energy went into space and somehow mixed with the thing that she was with yeah, and then came no, back and made her Binary. It is literally just Bendis writes like J.K. Rowling, <laughs> where every issue has to end on a cliffhanger. Right. Even if that cliffhanger doesn't pay off, or doesn't matter. Isn't part of anything. Or is stupid. Yeah. So she becomes binary, and you're like, whoa. And then the issue ends, and then we move on. Uh, so then uh, <laughs> Daisy gets picked up by Shield, and they take her away. Meanwhile, the Young Avengers are a thing, and they exist, and they have a Vision. Vision was, of course, ripped in half by She-Hulk during Avengers Assembled, but uh, they have another Vision who's younger, who's like from time, and now he's here, and he's on the Young Avengers, but he has not been implemented into the new Avengers, because if he were, that would be a clue to Sal to quit the book, 
which of course it would be later. <laughs> I, I, where I go, oh no, you're just you're just slowly trying to acclimate me like boiling a frog into reading the Avengers I wasn't interested in before you put Spider-Man on the team. <laughs> I wish Vision was just a torso. Yeah. Like when he got ripped in half. Uh, if they bishoped him from Alien 3, we're just like, we need, like, we have vision, we can't build, rebuild him because Ultron made him or something. And then we plug him into the system and he's like, our, he's our Jarvis, you know? But also we can't fix him. Like, he's so messed up. We can't. Right. So it's just like, he's just this horrible half skeleton that's just like jury rigged, like with a car battery. I would be very on board for that. <laughs> Instead, we have this young vision and they're like, we need vision. Come on, vision. I don't have a good new Avengers solution for this problem. I have an old Avengers solution for this problem, which is called Vision. Thankfully, we have a spare. Okay. So, did Carol Danvers, her sucking of energy, did that do anything? No. It, it just it, made it, her. It made her binary, character. but it didn't change. And it's like, all right, well, I got nothing. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go be binary now. Well, no, she's not going to leave. She oh. is going to be still trying oh, okay. to help out, but no. But but draining power doesn't work. It did not. Yeah, that's I mean, a good indication that like that's not going to work this time. Is right. it that she didn't drain enough power? Uh, I mean, she's only capable of draining so much power. Right. She drained like 1% of her power and it made her binary and that's and it's like, like but it, if it we didn't do that again, him. she die. Like, right. you know. So, the young Avengers like, "What do we do?" And he's like, "If you leave that tower and come here, I will have you arrested." <laughs> like, because when the young Avengers get involved, it's always against the will of the Avengers. Mm. You know, because they're like, you're a bunch of kids, you don't know any better, you don't have any training. Right. And then of course, like, it's usually in a Young Avengers book where they're like, oh, the, the girls don't know what, what we're gonna show them, we can handle our own. Yeah, and, right. and that was called the Children's Crusade. It's meant it was to appeal to the children. Exactly, yeah. and, and it's fun, it's, I, I, I appreciate it. But this is one of those things where it's like, no. Stay no, you will point. die. You will die. <laughs> and then I don't want that on my conscience. Yes. Did you see what happened to Alpha Flight? Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, they killed Alpha Flight and they're way more somehow more popular and more powerful than you are. Right. So stay where you are and be thankful <laughs> that right. I don't have you arrested right. anyway. I know who wants pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys can't stop Michael. You're too busy housing a couple of pizzas I had ordered to the mansion. <laughs> Whoa. Looks like it's a little Caesar space. <laughs> <laughs> I got six hot and ready pizzas. Only cost me $6. Don't forget the crazy bread. Oh, and, and wings. <laughs> and Mountain Dew. <laughs> Jarvis hits the fucking hi-fi system. Let's get it started. <laughs> Jarvis is actually a butler at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, he is. He's a real guy. I love guy. that. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's messing stuff up in Cleveland. Iron Man tries to help. He gets his armor kicked off his body for no good reason. Binary oh. swoops in and gets him. Wait, so he just came back down to atmosphere and Carol's like, I'm binary? Yes. And so she grabs Tony and pulls him away. Ms. Marvel uh, suddenly just starts freaking out and demonstrating different powers. Like she creates a typhoon and she shoots fire, becomes ice, and then oh. like explodes. And, and Storm has a big problem with this. Storm <laughs> is not watching this on TV. Uh, but so she then expels all that energy and becomes Ms. Marvel again and so we don't have to worry about that. Like the binary thing is just, oh. it's over. And I, I think it's just meant to demonstrate. How does she even get a name? Because she had one. Like before this, she had been binary at some uh, point or another. She's like, oh, absorbing that energy made me binary yes, again? Even though yes. it's a completely different mechanism? Yes. Were those also her what? powers when she was binary? No. Then That's what, what clues them in. Then in what way is she binary? Because she's surging with energy and she's still a corporeal being. Oh, this is kind of like that time when I was binary, yes. even though it's completely different. That's exactly right. Okay. That's what you're dealing with when you're reading a Bendis book. You know, you get you get like the most superficial references, right. like a deep cut. Hey, remember binary? That's the deepest of cuts in the most shallow waters. <laughs> so it's just a book of hey, remember when? Yeah, but unlike like Jed McKay, who like did read it and wants to like retcon something from thirty years ago, Bendis is like I didn't like read it. Okay, I yeah. like, I just watched Rob and he like talked about it for a few minutes and then <laughs> I just used it. All right. So in becoming binary. Yeah. <laughs> she just gets a costume change. It's well, not and, even but a costume she's change, crackling with energy. But she's also crackling with energy. That's right. Look, the whole point of her becoming binary is so she can demonstrate mutant abilities. Like she she, she does like a few different power oh. samples, which you then go, oh. And then they figure out from that that she's that, that like that, that is it's a mutant thing. Yes. Oh, if only metal was attracted to her. Yeah, but except Ma Magneto still exists, well, right? No, Magneto got depowered. Oh, okay, he did. Yeah, get he was one of the many that got depowered. So. 
turning into ice is inherently a mutant no, no, ability more just like and that, not just that, like a superpower that No, that just surprises have. them and they go, oh. So how like, do they know it's mutant? Well, because eventually they put together that it is. Like, they, 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 Based they, on what? Well, you know, Iron Man's like just loaded with technology. Oh, He's been absorbing like, data. These powers exhibit a signature typical of yes. mutant energy versus... But it, then why couldn't he tell just scanning the guy? Well, because who's, who's made of fucking mutant energy. I think it's because they're not looking for it. Well, also, you know, it's like, I'm looking for whatever. He's not, nice. like, demonstrating powers. He's just true. surging. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's true. He's, not, he's not exhibiting individual mutant powers. That's right. That's right. Mm, okay. So then Sentry finally shows up, and he just knocks Michael into orbit. Nice. And the two of them just battle like gods. And uh, That's great. That's what should happen. They take him out of Earth. Yes. Yeah, okay. and go fight up there. Yeah, that's what Carol tried to do in the first that's place. True. Yeah, but but she's not strong enough. Remember, Bob isn't an energy absorber. Like he's just an he's ass just kicker. super powerful. Yeah. So, mm. Meanwhile, on the on the helicarrier, Spider Man is like, "Hi, I'm Spider Man." You know, you meet Maria Hill for the first time. Uh, Iron Man gives it, like uploads his data and gives like Avengers files to Shield, so they have access to like everything that they have, so they can like cross reference their data. Uh, Vision's on his way. He's also going to help because he's basically like a USB drive for them. Like he can interface and <laughs> right. cross reference and stuff. Uh, question about Spider Man: Is he wearing the Iron Spider suit in Spider Man at this time? Yes, he is. Okay, a lot of coordination going okay. on. Yeah. So they eventually figure out that the guy who got hit by the energy surge must have worked in the post office that got hit, and so they eventually just like check all the face recognition files until they eventually settle upon Michael Pointer, who is this guy. He's okay. never existed before. He now he is a character. Fortunately, he's a government employee, so we have all the data exactly. on him. Exactly. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. He was in the post office. That doesn't mean he worked at the post well, office. Well, that's true. Yes. But I assume he did. So then Vision isolates the like power sources of what his energy is exhibiting, mm -hmm. and it pulls up the files of every mutant that had been depowered. Mm. And so they're like, oh, it's like a House of M sequel. Like, it's explaining all that crap. So right. we're seeing these are all the mutants. Like, this is where all the energy went from. Right. And not everyone knows what this means because not everyone still remembers House of M. Spider-Man's one of those people who does. Lucky him. Oh, he so remembers like, that, who are these people even? Right. Well, they remember. I mean, they, they knew they were mutants, but not anymore. And they don't know why, but, like, they <laughs> do know from rumblings that, like, it has something to do with a thing made up called House of M. I see. But Spider-Man's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and they're like, oh. You, like, wait, don't tell Maria, like, what you know. Right. She's going to be like, see, this is why you need to tell me about House of M, because, well, like, so, this could happen. Spider-Man gets, like, new armor, and he's, like, <laughs> back in action. He goes, hey, Spider-Man. Like, fly onto him? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, actually, <laughs> the, iron, the, the, the armor was separated from Stark and was left behind, but then eventually, like, like sucks together, become, like, a kind of, like, car <laughs> and then cap calls like an override on it and then makes it go find tony and rides it to tony <laughs> so that he can be where tony is and tony can become iron man again he uses fun. an override to get an uber ride that's right so <laughs> do they just keep coming up with new ways that cap can like join with the rest of the team because he doesn't fly, fly yeah, or anything? That's yeah. Right. it's yeah. like i will take the quinjet again i'll take my sweet motorcycle i'll ride iron man so Iron Man is like, hey, Pete, I need you to get out of there, like, right now. Like, just leave. Just don't say where you're going. Just go away. <laughs> and, like, uh, pretend you have to go to the bathroom or something. Exactly. And Pete's like, well, wait, we're st I'm, I'm, like, still working on this. And then he realized that he's been surrounded by S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. And they have their psychic unit on them. Oh, and they're like, hey, Spider-Man, what's House of M? And he's like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what and they're what? like, you're under arrest. <laughs> uh, I gotta go. Yep. So he's like, come on, young Vision, we gotta go. He eventually tries to leave, and then his turned off by a psychic. Like, he's just put to sleep. Oh. So he falls down. The psychic feels bad for him. She's like, I was in his head. He's just, he's just this poor piece of shit. <laughs> just gets his nuts kicked every other day. Also, I don't know why I have a hankering for wheat cakes. Exactly. Uh, Some part of him imprinted on her. So, he's unconscious. He's not telling you anything. No, but when he wakes up, we'll oh. get all we need from him. Until then, you got nothing. Well, yeah, but, like, you know, we're, we're, we're working on it. Okay. It's not true. You just kidnapped him. Yeah, and you just pissed off the Avengers. Yeah, that's right. So you so, accomplished a lot. Yeah, so Iron Man <laughs> meets Michael in orbit because he's, like, heading towards Earth. Mm. And uh, they, they were like, hey, the last time you fought him, like, he knocked your armor off. He's like, I wasn't ready that time. Now I'm ready. Nah. So he <laughs> okay. gets hit. Yeah, I tested his strength levels when he punched me. Yeah, so he hits him. He is okay. Mm. Bounces off him. Then Sentry comes back, and they fight. It's just a big fight. Yeah. With a lot of talking. 
It's a, yeah, it's a lot of talking. But, and, and not to say much, but you know, it, it keeps the action going. It actually yeah. does really like move at a good clip despite all of the talking. <laughs> and, and it also helps to fill in the gaps because you know, you're kind of like, what the fuck am I looking at? Like, what, you, what, is, what is your plan? What is your plan? Right. And he's just like, oh, you know, like I was able to deconstruct the primary energy fields he's using based on old files of Magneto and blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so Ooh, something's okay. happening, I guess. I gotcha. Tech stuff. And then Dave Otto Jr. is like, I'm going to draw the Sinister Six. I think that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> Like, okay, what? That's fun, I guess. I mean, I'll Look take it. Yay. They're there too. And it's just, it's an and now image. they're in the book. Yeah, it's an image that the psychic puts in Spider Man's oh, head. Like to wake him up. That's fun. Like they scare yeah. him awake. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And, <laughs> and Maria's like, all right, so House of M, what is it? He won't answer. But uh, while he was distracted, they just pulled the information out of his head. I was going to say they have a psychic. Exactly. Yeah. So they do. And uh, Cap arrives at the helicarrier. He's like, I'm going to have your jobs. Oh, our tragic is completed. You may take the boy. <laughs> no! <laughs> I have to wish for my memories back. Yeah. Not only me. So uh, Luke Cage like blasts the door down. Captain America's yelling at everybody. Maria's just like, no, I don't know what you guys are so upset about. Seems like you owe me a new door. <laughs> uh, like, right. We just momentarily detained him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What are you talking about? He's fine. Yeah, and then, like Cap's like, the, when the president finds out that you kidnapped a member of the event, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm actually on the phone with the president right now. Would you like to? Would you like to me to tell you he huh. called? Yeah, he's very interested in this thing called House of M. Yeah. He wants Which to know. You like, didn't tell what's him going about on? exactly. So then they see like Michael is heading somewhere. Like he just keeps trying to get somewhere. And they're right. like, where is it in Cleveland? No, it no, was Cleveland's on the, just way. In the way. He was going in. Well, they were, they were tracking him, and they're like, oh, he's going in like a direction. Like he's right. going in a straight line. And what would happen if we just let him go there? Hmm. So they they move sentry so he doesn't attack him, and then he goes and he lands in Genosha. Which, of course, at this point, Genosha had been annihilated and then was the, like, launch pad for the House of M story and is back to being an annihilated wasteland and the home of Magneto, mm. who, of course, has no powers. So Michael arrives in Genosha and they're like, oh my god, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> so meanwhile, Magneto's writing a, like, he's writing a story... It's like an autobiography or a manifesto. He's not sure what it's going to be. And no one cares because it's never brought up again. Uh, but Magneto, <laughs> and he's the only person there. Yeah, exactly. But he's writing it down. And then Michael proceeds to flip out. And then all this energy surges out of him. Uh, the Avengers touch down. Uh, the president calls Maria Hill and he's like, Hey, um, did he land? She's like, yeah. And he's like, great. Carpet bomb the shit out of Genosha with nuclear weapons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's like, I can't do that. The Avengers just arrived. And he's like, who cares? <laughs> I don't think you heard me. Like, How many the of them are there? Avengers. Like five? Right? Like, like five people? It's a shame, but like, it's fine. <laughs> no, we can't replace. Yeah. Right. What about Captain America? We can't remake him. I don't care. I, I really don't care. <laughs> so she refuses to do it. Interesting. As the Avengers uh, get into action. And they're like, I don't get it. Nobody's here. And Wolverine's like, oh, there is somebody here. <laughs> and then it's Magneto smelly. is lifted by the energy that surges out of Michael. Like and, an anime character. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the energy <laughs> itself becomes, you know, it's, it's, it is, as we've established earlier in the episode, it is sentient. Uh -huh. And it proceeds to say, like, you are Magneto. You are the ones the mutants look to for guidance and for leadership. The we, bad ones, we, anyway. We sought you out. <laughs> and we know that you are the one who can lead. There's a lot of implication here and context that we might need for hmm. this big dramatic moment where the, the voice from the energy reveals itself to be a character that was previously established in X-Men lore. Oh, yeah? But it, it, what? it involves spoiling a huge plot point in Grant Morrison's new X-Men run, but like, oh. there's no way nobody doesn't know about it. So, and I don't think we're ever going to really do all of new X-Men at any point. So, like, it's fine. But it's a shame we got to do it. But here we go. <laughs> In new X-Men, Grant Morrison's like, I've got a great idea to do this with the X-Men. First of all, Professor X had an evil twin in the womb. She's the reason why Genosha's dead. And, like, the X-Men got all messed up. And they all st started wearing, like, black leather. Because Morrison was like, superhero costumes are stupid and lame unless it's Superman. <laughs> but the X-Men should be like tactical gear and stuff. Right. Except for Wolverine who can wear no shirt and a jacket over it because that's really hot. And, or uh, just a flannel. While that happens, no, no flannel, all leather. So 
<laughs> in that, they also recover this like new character named okay. Zorn. And Zorn has a black hole for a brain. That's his mutant power. What the hell kind of power is that? Um, a Grant Morrisonian character. Oh, wouldn't it, it? Wouldn't it suck in the outside of his skull? No, he's got a big. He's got a big thing over his head. Oh, yeah, like but you like, still wouldn't it? be able to yeah. get information out. So he's got this thing. It looks like a crazy, scary skull, and he wears it. And he's like a pacifist. And Professor X can't read his mind, and it's this whole thing. He doesn't thing. have one. There's a black hole where well, his mind would be. Exactly, but even then, like, well, that's the thing. The black hole, he can't read it because it's like it's a black hole mind. Never been able to read that. Yeah, but think about it, Ethan. Uh, if a regular mind uh, can fit a certain size, a imagine how many brains could fit in this brain the size of a black well, hole. He's not like a biz- which is a black hole. He's not like a super genius. He just Professor X can't read it. But he, he, he's he's so Zorn joins the X Men. And then uh, also uses his like healing ability. He has a healing ability, and uh, makes Professor X able to walk again. So Professor X can walk. And then uh, the big twist is that Zorn is actually Magneto, and that he just like used like nanobots in Professor X to fuse his spine to work, and then just pulls them out. So Professor X is you know paralyzed again, and Magneto goes on like a tear and, and destroys most of New York. And he's like fuck everybody, ha ha, and then he dies. You uh, could just keep, let's keep the nanobots. Well, Wolverine kills him, but like, yeah. No. He's like, no, meh. <laughs> so, it's a big fun twist, but Magneto Zorn. How that did, was the big reveal. How does he have a black hole for a head? He doesn't. It's it's fake. It, he had the helmet oh, on and just blocked Professor X's ability. And, right. and chucks a sap. Right. And Wolverine well, why would Magneto stone? lie like that? No. I would, even, I would never think because of that, this, because that's insane. Exactly. <laughs> Magneto Zorn... And that's the big reveal. And then Magneto like, goes on a tear and he like, screws everything up and then uh, he kills Gene and then Wolverine kills him. And then uh, Magneto comes back to life. So everyone's like, whoa, that was awesome! What a crazy cool reveal! And then like Chuck Austin and other people at, at, at X-Men were like, but what if Zorn like, was a character though? <laughs> And because that's what they got, Marvel's got a Marvel. What does that mean? But no, no, he's Magneto. Right, and they're like, no. Magneto got the idea to be Zorn from the real Zorn. And there's two Zorns. What? There's like a Zorn so that has stupid. the black hole, that really does have a black hole for a brain. And then there's like another Zorn who's got like the opposite, it's got like a sun for a brain or something. And it just- So Magneto just, just ripped off another character that's so lame. That, no, that's Why the would retcon, he do that? because it sucks. <laughs> so like, there is a Zorn I thought and, it was gonna be like no Zorn's like an entity that like possesses. Well, and that's the idea is that like eventually because oh. there's a good Zorn and a bad Zorn. There's twin brother Zorns, and then uh, anyway, so then it turns out that one of the people in the energy cloud that was the energy pulled from all the mutants was Zorn, and Zorn was the reason why Magneto, why Magneto went nuts and killed like half of New York. That's how we can like redeem Magneto. Oh, you know, it wasn't really him. It was, it was Parallax. I mean, it was Zorn. <laughs> yes! Yes, it was Mutant Parallax. <laughs> so then Zorn, in the energy field of all the mutants, this is retconned by Bendis now. Yeah. It took over as the dominant personality and took all the energy and went to Magneto and was like, you're going to become the mutant messiah. Right. And so, like, say my name. Call my name, Bastion. And so he screams <laughs> Zorn and becomes Magneto. Uh, it's, it's not my name. It's Moonchild. <laughs> That's what he says, by the way. I don't know if you guys know this, but he screams Moonchild. It's impossible to understand in the movie, but trust me, it is. So, uh, so he becomes the Zorn like version or persona of Magneto. No, no. Zorn <laughs> wants Magneto to like embrace him and become the true mutant leader that Zorn believed Magneto should be. And so he uses the energy of like the energy cloud to give Magneto his powers back mm. and make a Magneto costume. <laughs> and so he does, but Magneto's like, I don't want to be Zorn and I don't want to do any of this. Right. So he's a reluctant Well, don't worry, you don't villain. have to be Zorn. You're still Magneto, except you're Zorn. Right. So, <laughs> But you are Zorn though. But we also established that like this means that Michael, they call them the collective, uh, but the collective can make the mutants mutants again. Like we can fix this, right? Unless nobody dead. says that. Well, right. the, the dead but the ones, energy's there, and he just did it to Magneto, so like so, presumably he can still do it. Yeah, to he could just just invite everyone to Genosha and then just form like, a boom, cube. Boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Didn't yeah. Genosha get like bombed? Well, yeah, the Genosha's dead, but like whatever. It's it's just a big empty island now. 
Uh, except that uh, Zorn is like, oh no, the Avengers are here, so I'll use my nebulous abilities to resurrect an army of the undead from the corpses of Genosha to attack the, the Avengers. Yeah, one of the mutants' powers inside me must be able to do that. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Well, there's a lot. There's millions, so yeah. Yep. So they do, and so they have to fight zombies while, you know, they're formulating a plan to deal with it because they heard Magneto yell Zorn really loud. Right. And so they're like, oh no, Zorn! And, and, and Spider-Man's like, what's a Zorn? I don't know what that means. <laughs> and Wolverine's like, don't worry about it. It's bad. So they're fighting zombies, but they're also fighting the corpses of their friends. Eh. Are they friends? Are they, they don't know them. Yeah, these are just people from Genosha. They're just Genosha. folk who lived in Genosha. Yeah. And actually, I believe it's like a team that went to go help the Genosians before everyone was annihilated. But it doesn't matter. Oh, so maybe the they is, do know them. Maybe they do know a couple of them, but like, who cares? So Magneto's like, oh no! And then Sentry's like, so do you want me to just throw Collective into the sun? <laughs> I'll do it. And, and everyone's like, no, like, don't do that. Like, keep him on the island so he doesn't go anywhere and do more. Right. So then uh, the energy itself is dissipated out of him and into Magneto because like Zorn's like controlling it now. So Michael is now just this naked regular guy. Oh. Oh, and they also realized because of the like energy that was produced by all the mutants being depowered and going into Michael, Michael must be a mutant whose ability is to absorb energy. So Michael is a latent mutant. He just didn't have enough energy to absorb to like realize he was a mutant. Did he draw unconsciously that entity to him or is it just a gigantic coincidence that it happened to hit him? I believe that like <laughs> Zorn taking over the energy of the collective ah. sought Michael as a vessel right. to transport said energy to Magneto right. who would be a better candidate for it. Why well, didn't it just go to Magneto in the first place then? I was just going to say, right. let me ask you this. Why wouldn't it just go straight to Magneto well, and cut out Michael entirely? I'll tell you why. Because Magneto is not good at an energy absorption. Oh. But, but it just puts its energy into, into him Magneto. anyway. Yes. So why would uh, it just like fly up to him listen. and then just do that right in front of him? Because I'm Bendis and I make new characters. I guess... If I'm being generous, right. the character, and maybe they do explain this, Michael maybe has the power to absorb energy from a big blob of energy or draw and it. bestow energy from himself into yeah. someone else. He's not else. just absorbing, he can transfer. Right. Absorption and transference. Right. Whereas the blob That's a two -way can't do that. Right. It can't transfer itself. It needs someone who can transfer it That's right. into someone. Sure. There's a lot of words in this book. Maybe one of them One of them said that. <laughs> Maria Hill has the option to kill all the Avengers and she chooses right. not to do it. It wouldn't work anyway. Oh, I know. You're gonna blow up this energy beam with a nuclear bomb? No. Like, I don't think so. Yeah, but it is, it's bad optics. Like, you know, this this island nation was already nuked. Yeah, could we not, can like, we re -nuke, not it? nuke it again? <laughs> it looks like we're just, like, kind of celebrating. On the other hand, what else are you gonna nuke? There's no better target than something that's this already been nuked. Gotta nuke something. <laughs> I have all these nukes. So we got them. Anything. There's nothing there no anyone will miss other than all the Avengers. So then they, they dispatch Daisy Johnson. Okay. And uh, what's Quake gonna do? So was, was she the one that was asked by Cap to be brought to this? So Cap communicates with Daisy via proxy. So Cap's like, I want you to tell her to do to Magneto what she did to Wolverine that one time in Secret War, but, because it's secret, I can't really talk about it. I have to get to use vague terms. Mm. So do to Magneto what you did to Wolverine that one time, but in his head and not his heart. Because Daisy does that to Wolverine and blows up his heart. Right. Uh, so in this case, she's going to blow up his brain, but... Oh, thank God. I thought she was going to pull the adamantium out of <laughs> Magneto. Yeah. Well, but he doesn't have any. Yeah. No, well, her power is only quake -based. Shaking things, It yeah. can't, like, pull. Yeah. So uh, unlike... Quakes can push. That's true. So uh, unlike what she does to Wolverine, which is blow up his heart. She pinpoints like a, a precise location in Magneto's brain, and Bendis invented her so she can do this. And <laughs> instead of liquefying his brain, it like fires the energy out of Magneto. So the energy's in his brain? Sure, or maybe it's the epicenter by which it is controlled. Maybe by doing the, her quake power, it essentially trepans him yeah. and drills a hole. <laughs> right, and then it and fires then the up the other end. has a way to get out. It's like drilling like a hole in an egg and then blowing all the insides of the egg out <laughs> while preserving the shell. I thought you were supposed to suck eggs, not blow them. You can do either. It, it's been, it depends on what you're trying to do. Oh. Does it cause him permanent damage? It does not. So he didn't need that part of his brain. Well, it, the brain is not destroyed. It, it's more like a... 
it, it quakes the energy out of it. This is one it's of the like most- It's not like an embolism. Out of, it is kind of like an embolism. Out of, this is one of the most confounding last act <laughs> shit togethers I've ever seen in a comic book. Yeah. Like, I swear to God. Okay, because- Like, what is, is like, it about earthquake powers no, no, no. that would make her it's, able it's, to okay. shoot energy out of someone's no, brain? They've got, okay, there are okay. a lot of working parts. Yeah. Magneto has the collective and Zorn's consciousness slash energy in him, and it's like reverberating around him, right? Magneto is the target. We have Quake, who's firing a little miniature earthquake in Magneto's brain. Mm -hmm. We have Carol over there, and she's supposed oh. to absorb the energy as much as she can, which she can't because it's already seen she can't do it. Yeah. But she's going to do it over there. Iron Man also learned how to do energy absorption earlier in this story, which we've seen, and he's going to grab it in a kind of electromagnetic field and then encase it in said field so that Sentry can grab it <laughs> and then throw it into the sun. We gotta give everybody something to do. It's gotta be a Weren't team Weren't we gonna effort. throw it into the sun originally and we Weren't said throw no? a guy into the sun. Throw a man now we're gonna into throw the sun. this energy. Yeah, they had to save Michael. Yeah. Which they already did. Michael's yeah. now just a naked guy. Yeah, but now they got to get the. Now they got to save Magneto. Yeah. So yeah. like, so Quake hits Magneto's brain, and then the energy pops out, and I guess it just surges into Captain Marvel or Ms. Marvel, and then she fires it at Iron Man, and Iron Man encases it into a thing, and then they throw it at Bob, and then Bob fires it into the sun, and he pushes it into the sun, and we see like a face form, and it's like no, and it dies. Which like also. The one thousand. Yeah. Which also is. Their way of being like, no, that House of M shit happened, and we're not gonna undo it. You can't get right. your mutants back. No. We we showed you the fact that we can do it. We can do it. Yep. Right. And it works with Magneto. You got Magneto. Right. 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 That's you're it. welcome. That's pretty. That's pretty good. But also, he's pretty important. So you also got Michael Pointer. No. He's also a mutant. Oh, that's right. And so, but apparently his power is absorbing other mutants' powers. Well, no, no he, he, transferring he, them no, or he, something. He absorbs and transfers energy. Energy. Sometimes he, that's powers. Sometimes that's, it could be something else. Well, you'll see. So yeah, they, sometimes it's poop. So they do that, and they kill the all, they and they kill all the mutants basically. So oh, and the corpses just go away. Right. Whatever. The, I'm just reading the panels. I'm like, there's no explanation. None. It's just a bunch of stuff that happens. And you're this just is like, infuriating. sure. <laughs> like it's, and it's like, look, they're not but all. Look, they all work together. <laughs> look at them working as a team. Look, well, yeah, someone came up with a plan, and then like they executed. Everyone was needed for the plan. Parts, yeah, you know, that's that's why you need the Avengers. Yeah, I got to invent friggin' insane Problems. nonsense for everyone to do. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. And all meanwhile, right. Maria Hill is still like, I don't like you, Avengers. Well, no, she's like, oh, like we do need. The Avengers. Right. Except she's also going to try to arrest them in the next volume. So, whatever. Yeah, she wasn't changed that much. So, everybody shows up. And the cavalry arrives. Right. And, uh, and Daisy goes to Captain America and he's like, hey, thanks a lot. She was Quake. And he's like, what? She's like, my Avengers name. I want to be called Quake. And he goes, oh, we're, we're not like looking for new members or anything. We, we just needed you for this one thing. We're not like recruiting. Yeah. And she's like, oh, how embarrassing. And it's I'm like, like, why didn't she just join the Avengers? Right. Like, why not? Well, I don't, I don't want to, like, shove her down your throat. Right. I'm oh, not... I mean, admittedly, thank you. Well, okay, yeah. But in retrospect, everyone does. Yeah. So why not? Right. So then... Uh, well, th now it's really awkward. It's like, yeah, why wouldn't you do that? That's yeah. what you would normally do. Exactly. Also, like, Carol is, like, in every third volume of the new Avengers. Right. Why isn't she just an Avenger? And I know why... It's because after Civil War, there are two Avengers teams, and she leads one of them. Oh, yeah. Well, what about the Sentry? The Sentry's super powerful. Why don't they just make him an Avenger? Well, he is an he Avenger. He is an Avenger. Yeah, he is He lives Avenger. with them. Yeah. I he's, thought he just lived above got, their no, house because of his freaking tower. <laughs> both. He just parked his ass there, and they're like, I guess you're on the team? They invited him first, and then oh, he parked okay. his ass there. Okay. Oh, okay. It's a shame he doesn't do more. Uh, is it? he freaks out all the time. Well, that's yeah. true. So then Michael reveals, oh, I've also got vague and generic energy powers. Some part of the collective imprinted on him, and so now he can also like be useful in a fight. <laughs> no, and I don't like, want him. Good man, luck with all that. Yeah, and they're like, he's like, I guess I'm a superhero now. And then one of them says something no. like, one of them goes, well, maybe we even got a superhero out of the deal. And I'm like, you, you killed off via depowering 
hundreds. Of millions of billions of, 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 of actual characters of, of literal yeah. characters. named characters and then you had the audacity to go but here's a new one from me <laughs> who's like a little piece of all of them i've it's seen named, all the i've seen all the x-men here's one from me yeah. named michael <laughs> and you know why you have to play with michael because you can't have the rest that's right you know we only get 198 of these and a lot of them are already taken yeah and you've already spent one yeah <laughs> So, it just happened, man. I know. So Michael becomes a character, and they like use him in the future. I have never read a single issue of anything he's ever been in, but he has a name. It's called Omega. He also like joins Alpha Flight as like penance and apology, but but they don't accept him. What do you mean joins Alpha Flight? They're dead. Yeah. Yo, they, they Flight, need a new member. They need a new member. <laughs> So, but he's not Canadian. Come back. He's no. from the North Pole. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah, he's from the North. Yeah, Magneto is unconscious, and Shield arrests him, and they take him away for doing what? Because he's Magneto. For House of M. For everything he did before House of M, when he oh. destroyed New York and stuff, and then just oh left. right, they never got him. They I never guess. got him. So then, like, like, you know, you got your powers back. You're under arrest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then yep. they they take off in the helicopter, and then the helicopter explodes. And they're what? like, and like we can't find his body. <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah, so they're like, oh, that was weird. And then Maria, like, thinks about the situation she was just in, where, like, the president's like, kill the Avengers, I don't give a shit! Just blow them up! And she didn't. But then, like, the Superhuman Registration Act is coming. What side will I be on? What am I gonna do? Oh. This, is, this is a more complicated problem than I ever thought possible. Oh. <laughs> and that, that's, that's that. Gotcha. I, I want you to understand. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of fun. This is a this is a fun series. I love this book. Yeah, but I hate this story. It sucks. It, it is terrible. It is, it is a massive letdown. It's super weird. the 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 most long lasting effect that this book has, outside of inventing Omega, and repowering Magneto, is the cover that depicts the Avengers in Magneto's helmet. It'll be the background for this episode. Oh, nice. Yeah, because yeah. it's 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 awesome. It is awesome. But that never happens. No. They don't fight him. No. And in the fight. He's just in the book. He's like, please kill me. <laughs> he's not doing anything cool. No. <laughs> he's a, he's an unwilling participant, like, participant. In his own book. Jeez. Yeah. It sucks. And it's just, this is one of those things where Bendis is like, oh yeah. I gotta write like a few more issues before the next thing. Crap. Well, I think I got a fun idea about Luke Cage. But that's not like a whole arc. <laughs> I'll stick it in though. Right. Well, yeah. But it's, I, that but it's fills the pages. Yeah. There's lots of stuff going. I on. can't just I can't just show another scene of them in the kitchen. <laughs> okay. So, point of clarification: it's North Pole, Alaska. Yes. It's the town of North Pole in Alaska. I'm sorry. You're that's right. why there's a that's why there's a post office. Yes, you're right. It was so, Alaska. That makes a lot more sense. But there is no North Pole in Alaska. I don't understand. No, no. But they this call it town North Pole. It's called that, I guess. I assume that yeah, you no. just make it up. I, I, I have to assume. Yeah. Second thing. When you're reading it, it's just like you're, you're in it. This is very much a book in the present. Right. This is just the next thing that happened. Yeah, and it, and it's not so seminal that like people are going to refer to it like the Kree Scroll War right. or something else. Right. Sometimes you just have an everyday adventure. Not quite everyday adventure. No, but, but it's like. This was pretty big. It was an Avengers level story, but yeah. also no one's ever going to refer to it ever again. Right. Because also the idea of resurrecting the corpses of Genosha and having them fight, like, I think they do it at least two more times. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Like I remember I, Empire, they did it. So Genosha's just like it's 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 just Co City. It's just yeah. Their Co City. Yeah, it's Co City. Parallax like, again. I that's know. That's a great idea. We should just do a Co City. Right. Let's pull uh, a Genosha. Yeah. I mean, it is a great idea. It, I know what Genosha is. Like right. you created this like iconic yep. thing out yep. of this like relatively new recent well, thing. It's it's like well, I it's guess like it's a 35, 40 30, year yeah, old story. Well, like no, even Genosha, like when it was invented, like at first Genosha was like an island that oppressed mutants that was yeah. built on the backs of mutant slavery. So like yeah. it's it's gone through a lot of changes. Yeah, and and they've but, you and know, I, would, I would argue that the longest Did they rebuild it ever? No, like they don't. It's just it's just shit. Yeah. So like, I think that, that happen? that's actually the longest period. Like the longest period is like now it's mostly where been it's mostly just nothing. It's, a, it's just a graveyard. How come 
New Avengers The Collective, if it's in print anymore, it's in the comments down below, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or you can find it at a local library. That's true, like we did. <laughs> it's got all kinds of stickers and, and crap all over it. This is actually, I think it was sent to us by an intrepid member of our audience, but thank you so much. Well, you we'll can't find guys. it at that library anymore. Hell no. No, we got it now. See you guys next week with an all new episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. I could bring all the mutants back. What? But it won't. But it won't. Why, won't. Would, why would Zorn do this, though? I don't understand. <laughs> and like, how did that power get out there? Like, why would it magically get transported? It was magic. I know, but like, why would magic make it do that? Uh, I, she didn't plan on that happening. It was like it was a it was a circumstance. Right. I guess she just she just. I just, I just said no more mutants. I don't know. Yeah. And then it's like, well, in order to scientifically make that happen magically, right? Uh, it needs to go over there, and then like, if it's over there, and Zorn's a dominant personality, he's going to take over all the energy. The initial transfer of the power to space was magical, but once it was in space, it was no longer a magical thing. Yeah. It was just the physical power. Uh, energy, well, whatever, is sitting it, out there. Right. Is it because like the ley lines on Earth only go so far? <laughs> oh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, well, is there no magic in space? space yeah, no, Doc Strange can use magic in space. Plus there's space magic.